What's up, guys? Okay, so, uh, so welcome to this uh quick tutorial for the vector space. Uh, so what I uh I plan to do this video is I try to quickly uh prove that the Schwartz or basically people the Cauchy Schwartz inequality in Hilbert space. Okay, so uh, let me quickly introduce the notation. So I define f, uh, the f bracket g to be the inner products uh, in the Hilbert space. Uh, so the usually R n here is also Hilbert space, also complex n dimensional is also Hilbert space, and it's also the functional space. If you take the continuous function and then you define the inner product to be uh, f g of x, right? Uh, this is also Hilbert space. Or basically L two R is also Hilbert space, but you don't care about it, right? All you need is the, all all you need to know is Hilbert space, basically the complete inner product space. So basically, all we need to know is that uh, we have a good inner product. Okay. Uh, so the result is that uh, we have F, uh, and G. If you do the inner product and then you do the square, then you will become then you are less than uh, F. The norm of f and the norm of g. Okay, so first things we can we just compare the ordinary r and vec, uh, vec, uh, vectors. Uh, the reason is easy because uh, if you take two vectors, you dot with square, then basically by definition this is a square b square cosine theta square, and we know that cosine theta is less than one. Uh, norm uh, norm of cosine theta is less than less or equal to one, so this is trivial. Right, so somehow like we need to generalize this, uh, into uh, uh, in generalize into Hilbert space, and the proof is really easy, right? Uh, suppose we take the f, we take the i, right? I define i is a scalar, is f minus lambda g and f minus lambda. So I I I ask what is I ask the norm of this, right? So and the lambda is some number which I uh, I will specify. And I spec and I know that this is known, so this is larger than zero. And I choose lambda to be this gf and the gg. Okay. Now I claim this i will become this. Okay. And uh, so the reason is that uh, we can expand i as ff minus uh, <coughs> uh, minus this uh, f right, lambda g minus uh, lambda gf. Uh, plus like lambda square uh, gg, okay. Okay, so we can uh, put lambda in, okay. Uh, so, uh, the no so usually uh, the notation is basically f lambda g will become uh, lambda fg, and uh, lambda gf will become lambda star gf, okay. Okay, so maybe let me maybe let me create another. Let me create another page. Maybe this is better. Okay, so uh, let me write down. So I is FF, FF uh, minus F lambda G, right? So lambda FG minus lambda star GF plus lambda star GG. Right, and we choose uh, lambda to be gf divided by gg. So lambda is gf divided by gg. Okay, so I will become uh, ff, right? and uh, this is fggf divided by gg plus. So lambda star is basically you just exchange the f and g. Right? So if you exchange these two, then you become a complex conjugate. So fg. Uh, gf plus uh by the way let me check uh yeah so lambda square so if you square right square become uh, the g so it become like gg uh, gf square right so it's amazing that this i merely become this ff and these three terms are the same right so and so minus two uh two of them then you get least divided by least. 
might be larger than zero. So you times gg, right? So you have gg is positive because this is the inner product. And finally, you have this. Or basically, fg, gf. Okay, so this is the proof. I apologize for my mess, mess writing. Yeah, but uh, basically, this is the simple proof for the Koji Shiwa's identity. Okay, so I will see you guys in another other uh, video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks.